वेलकम टू द कोर्स डिजिटल ह्यूमन मॉडलिंग एंड सिमुलेशन और वर्चुअल आर्गोनोमिक एवेल्यूशन सो इन दिस कोर्स द कोर्स डिजिटल ह्यूमन मॉडलिंग एंड सिमुलेशन फॉर वर्चुअल आर्गोनोमिक इवेल्यूशन डील्स नॉट ओनली विद द बेसिक आर्गोनोमिक्स बट ऑल्सो कवर्स ऑल द रेलिवेंट टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड टू वर्चुअल आर्गोनोमिक इवेल्यूशन टेक्निक्स इंक्लूडिंग इट्स एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस सो नाउ intended audience for whom this course has been designed this course is for undergraduate and postgraduate students of engineering then industrial design disciplines it is expected that engineering students of undergraduate and postgraduate departments from various background like mechanical engineering production engineering then civil engineering who are also studying biomedical biomedical engineering all of them will be immensely benefited from this course not only engineering students but also students who are studying industrial design as well as architecture or various course related to occupational health and safety they will also find this course very interesting and also beneficial for their curriculum yeah. now this course is mainly elective course and as i have already mentioned both undergraduate student and postgraduate student can opt for this course but one there is one prerequisites for digital human modeling and simulation for virtual algorithmic evaluation if you want to learn this course you want to know about this course then what is the prerequisite prerequisite is the you must have basic knowledge of any 3d modeling cat software that may be unique graphics that may be catia that may be solid work solidus but at least one of the 3d cat modeling software you must know if not very proficient no problem but basic knowledge of any 3d cat modeling software is essential for this course now the course we have made like this way in for this course will run for 8 weeks and in different weeks we will discuss different topics so it will start from introduction to ergonomics in the first week and then gradually we will move towards digital human modeling so in the second week use of percentile anthropometric and biomechanical data for designing various facilities or workstation or products we will discuss then in the third week we will discuss about virtual ergonomics and its its advantages in the fourth week introduction to digital human modeling and simulation then in week 5 techniques or methods for virtual ergonomic evaluation using digital ergonomic software the same will be continued in week 6 and in week 7 we will discuss how this digital human modeling software is used for virtual ergonomic evaluation in the, across diverse industrial sectors or occupational sectors and in the last week that is eighth week we will discuss about the future research scope in this direction and what steps or what initiative is needed to be taken to popularize this subject to popularize this domain of knowledge in developing countries like india now moving to the course so we are starting today the first module module 1 and this module is related to introduction to ergonomics before moving to the actual topic that is digital human modeling and simulation or virtual ergonomic evaluation we should discuss something related to design then gradually we will move to ergonomics then virtual ergonomics and digital human modeling because if we are, as we are studying virtual ergonomics for studying virtual ergonomics knowledge of ergonomics is required first you know the contextual knowledge of ergonomics second is the design you must know the 
how we use ergonomics in de designing various products or workplace or different types of facilities. If you see the statement by Duke Kettle to, uh, <coughs> 2002, he mentioned contextual knowledge is strongly recommended for virtual ergonomic evaluation or virtual investigation using CAD and digital modeling software. So this is very important that contextual knowledge in which context we are evaluating the product or facility using our soft CAD model, CAD software, that is very important. And the second important thing is that knowledge of ergonomics is very important for that purpose. So while someone is going to learn digital human modeling software or want to use digital human modeling or virtual ergonomic evaluation, he or she must have the knowledge of ergonomics. Otherwise, interpretation will go in wrong direction. Now, in this course, we, will, we are starting from design. Now, very interestingly, Fizent 1986, he mentioned that there are common five fallacies regarding the design. That how we should design. Some people think, okay, if we design, the design is satisfactory for me, it will therefore satisfy everyone. But it is not possible in real scenario. People also believe that if design is satisfactory for the average person, I mean, what is average person? The person with average body dimension, average capacity of working, and his all other average performance capability, then the product will satisfy everybody. That is also not true. Similarly, the variability uh, in the third understanding or belief is that in human population, there is huge variation. So it is not possible to design any facility or any product which will satisfy everybody. But since people are wonderfully adaptable, it does not matter what you are designing. So, mean somehow people will adapt to it. The fourth design fallacy is ergonomics is expensive and since product are actually purchased based on its appearance or visual aesthetics. So it does not matter whether ergonomic principle has been incorporated in the product or not. The fifth fallacy is that ergonomics is an excellent idea, but I always design things with ergonomics in mind, but I do it intuitively and rely on my self-understanding. I do not need table of data. It means many people think, okay, ergonomics is the common sense, so whatever we can do, in applying our common sense, that is the ergonomics. For that purpose, no database or standard is required, but that is also wrong. So these are the five common design fallacies which are believed by the people. It has been mentioned by Fission 1986. Now, if we ask <coughs> you, what is design? The definition of design is very, I mean, how, if defining design is very difficult because sometimes people will say it is a noun, it is a verb, it is an adjective, but what actually design is? If I say, okay, for example, if we say the design of this, I have a design in my mind for this pen, or I want to design a pen and I have some concept in my mind. So design, sometimes it is the concept. Sometimes I want to design a chair. What does it mean? It means I want to make some chair. I mean, that is the process. I want to follow some process. <coughs> sometimes design may be, I like the design of the chair. What does it mean? Design means the product. So sometimes design is the product, sometimes design is the process, sometimes design is the concept or idea. So actually defining the word design is very difficult. So for that reason, Hesketh 2005, he nicely mentioned what is design? Design is to design the design of a design. Now if you notice the color coding, what is design? Design is, an, is a general concept or policy. It is an activity 
डिजाइन इज अन और इंटेंशन और कॉन्सेप्ट एंड द लास्ट दिस ग्रीन डिजाइन द फिनिश प्रोडक्ट और आउटकम so in general how we can define design so we can define design as design is an design is a scientific branch where a particular product or facility or output is developed or made following some methods from predefined idea I mean design is a process where we are making something following some specific process from preconceived ideas now why design is important because we are this is a course for virtual ergonomics in that course why we are discussing about design because design is very important in our daily life if you see this diagram then what you understand so here is origin importance of design origin of cost and here potential to influence the cost in the typical design development process it is starting from design then fabrication then assembly and remaining activities the first phase that is the design for designing any product or any facility what is required only 12% origin cost is there origin cost only 12% mean out of 100 only 12 is required for this purpose but the design is such an important phase in the design development process that it has the potential to increase the cost by 75% so although in the design phase cost requirement is very less but if your design is not proper or correct then what will happen it will increase the cost by 75% so design is a very important phase in the product or process development cycle now Nobel prize winning economist Herbert Simon he defined design how he has defined design design is the process we use to change whatever existing you have to make it better so that's why he mentioned design is the process we use to change the existing scenario existing situation to a preferred situation now in design process there are various phases pre conceptual phases then conceptual then pre design and finally detail design so these are the four steps in the design process so what we do pre conceptual stage then conceptual So in conceptual stage, it is very clear from this the second one conceptual stage. So we are conceptualizing, or we are going for some ideas of that product, of that facility, or that process. Then we are going for design, pre-design stage. But what is pre-conceptual? I mean, before the conceptualization, I mean, what we are going to make of that concept? Before we need some information to conceptualize the product or the process. so this will be much more clear if we go to the next slide so in pre conceptual say for example we are want to design something for that purpose what we need in the pre conceptual phase we need to go for user study or ethnographic study mean who are the actual user or intended user for either who are they are right presently using that type of product or you are developing on some new product which intended user will use next field observation or market survey then design limit selection this is very important because before conceptualization of that product you need this information in what is the use context who are the targeted user physical dimension of that product or facility then material cost manufacturability sustainability all this information you must have with you then only you can move for the conceptual phase then in the conceptual phase ergonomics should be considered from this phase onwards not like that in the detailed design phase so role of ergonomics is actually starting from this conceptualization phase 
So first we should go for brainstorming, then focus group study, conceptualization, the 2D sketches, 3D sketches, then uh, CAD modeling, rendering, concept screening or finalization using various techniques like quality function deployment, analytic hierarchy process, so many other techniques are there. So with those techniques we can screen those concepts and we can go for mock-up development if it is required. So, so starting from pre-conceptual phase gradually move towards conceptual phase. After conceptual phase while, while your concept is ready and following that concept screening you are entering in pre-design phase. In pre-design phase what we are doing? We are doing ergonomic evaluation in virtual environment. If we have already developed the 3D, 3D CAD model and rendered render CAD model then we can go for virtual ergonomic evaluation using CAD and digital modeling software. Then we can, we can go for physical mock-up development if required. Then various types of engineering evaluation like material, properties, stress, strength, structure, stability, integrity, manufacturability, all these issues we can study here. Following this pre-design phase, then we can, so ultimately here only we are gathering the information, what are required for conceptualization, then in the conceptual phase we are making the concept, making the following uh, concept screening we are finalizing the concept. In pre-design stage, mainly we are developing the either CAD model or physical mock-up. After that, we are going for prototype development. Here important thing, in pre-design stage, what we discussed about either physical mock-up or virtual mock-up or CAD model. In this case, these are, so as we mentioned, this is mock-up, but here it is prototype. So what is the difference between mock-up and prototype? In mock-up, generally what we do? we make the product in its miniature form or scale down model and the material may not be the original one. Its functionality may not be like the actual product, actual intended product. But in case of prototype, it is material is also the same like the actual product. It's, it is usable when it is, its function is similar to the original product or intended product. At the same time, generally prototype is made in one is to one scale, mean with the at the actual size. But in case of mock-up, we can make any scale down model for our visualization or understanding. Now in the detail, now we are again coming to detailed design phase. In detailed design phase, from this mock-up while we are developing the prototype or following CAD model, we are developing the prototype then prototype is tested, user feedback is taken and ultimately we move towards final product development or production process. So here we have given one example, in this example, so this is a, this is called mop art for floor cleaning. When you are cleaning the floor for that purpose we use this type of mop art. Now first we need to information who are using then what's the dimension, what's the size, what's the affor affordability of the people who are using this type of mop art that is important in this phase. Then gradually while we are moving to conceptualization phase, then we are going for 2D sketches with paper pencil and ultimately developing the CAD model. While CAD model is ready, then we are making a physical mock up. CAD model, following CAD model, ergonomic evaluation or engineering evaluation and ultimately we are coming with this type of mock-up development. Well, mock-up is ready, then after testing of that mock-up, we can go for final production. We can go for prototype, even this in this prototype development phase also, we can go for prototype 1, refinement of that, then prototype 2, then prototype 3, and ultimately we go for production. So, just going back, so we started from, from this slide. If we look at this slide, so we started from design, then as we mentioned gradually we will move towards ergonomics. So first like we have covered design, what is design, what are the steps in design, why design is important. Now we are moving to ergonomics. The word ergonomics 
is derived from Greek word argon meaning war and nomos meaning law. So, in general, you can say uh, what is ergonomics? Ergonomics is the law of work or principle of work. There are various definitions of ergonomics. Ergonomics is fitting the task to the person, use the rule of work, work smarter, not harder, then make things user friendly, more usable, more comfortable. Here I want to mention one interesting thing. This is from LinkedIn post made by Dr. Ira Poddha in 2016. This is very interesting. I will suggest all of you to go through this one. Already link is given. So she mentioned, does ergonomics mean only a chair? Because among various myths about ergonomics, the most popular one is possibly ergonomics is nothing but a chair. Still now in developing countries as well as in few developed countries, ergonomics as a subject is not that much popular and people are unaware about this subject. So whenever if we ask someone what is ergonomics, the, they reply something like this is something related to comfort user friendly and generally how you can make chair, table, all this. So that is why she rightly pointed out that most popular myth regarding ergonomics is ergonomics is nothing but a chair. People often assume getting an ergonomic chair for the office will solve all the problems related to that workplace like back pain, repetitive strain in UD or any form of musculoskeletal disorder. But in reality, it is far from that. Because ergonomics is not only that comfort or sitting or designing of that chair or that workplace. Ergonomics deals with so many other factors. So, say just example, in this case only, in not only office chair, while you are talking about the office ergonomics, it is related to hierarchical, hierarchical structure of that office. Then, physical environment higher that oh, person is working in that office, his cognitive workload, how much information he is receiving and how much physical activity or mental activity he has to do. So, so many other aspects are associated with this. But people's only understanding is what is ergonomics? Ergonomics is only comfortable sitting posture or chair table design. Now, as we have discussed the definition of ergonomics, if we ask you, here are two scenarios. This is scenario 1 on the left side and on the right side scenario 2. Now, which one is preferred? In the first scenario, one lady, she is in squatting posture, sitting on the ground and cooking on chula or stove. On the other hand, in the right hand side, lady is standing and cooking on an elevated surface. Now, if we look at this two picture, what happened in this case? This is the task and we force the human that fit the man to the task. So, human is bound to be fitted with the task. Human is bound to be fitted with the task, means fit the man to the task, this scenario. And on right side, as per human requirement, human comfortable posture, the task has been modified. Fit the task as per the requirement of human. So obviously between these two, we will prefer for this one. This is the right one. Me, as we discussed about the ergonomics, ergonomics is fitting the task, we have to fit the task to the man, but never we will compel the man or woman to be fitted with the task. Now if we elaborate the definition of ergonomics, more elaborately what we can say about ergonomics. 
I want to mix in a single word. What is ergonomics? Ergonomics is an interaction. Interaction of what? Ergonomics is the interaction between human and his or her machine tools, equipments. Ultimately, we can mention work elements. So this is ergonomics is an interaction between human and his or her work elements. Now, more elaborately, you can mention ergonomics is a discipline or subject or science where we discuss interaction between human and work element. And this is a two-way interaction. And this interaction is being influenced by surrounding physical environment. Not only physical environment, there are so many other factors also. This interaction is influenced by environmental factors, various environmental factors like temperature, humidity, illumination, similarly psychosocial factors, various types of economic factors. So, so many factors are there which are affecting this interaction. Then how we can mention the definition of ergonomics? So, ergonomics is a discipline or a subject or a science where we discuss about the interaction between human and his or her work elements and all other factors which all other factors these are those factors which affect this interaction why we study this subject to improve enhance the performance and efficiency of what performance and efficiency of the system now the thing what is system this human i have put number one work elements that is two and surrounding physical environment three man machine and surrounding environment these three components are collectively forming a overall system. So man, machine and environment, these collective systems, the system's performance, efficiency is enhanced if we follow ergonomic principle. So we discuss this subject, we study this subject so that the performance and efficiency of overall system can be improved. We can increase the productivity at the same time we can reduce the error and accident. Now, again we are coming to the definition of ergonomics. So, what is ergonomics or human factors? Ergonomics is discipline or subject or science where we discuss about the interaction between human and work elements and all other factors which affecting this interaction to improve systems performance, productivity, efficiency at the same time reduction of error and accident. So this is the overall definition of ergonomics or human factors. Now if we move towards the history or origin of the subject, that how the subject ergonomics or human factors develop. So first the word ergonomics was used in 1857 by Jastavosti in the journal Nature and Industry. He mentioned that one scientific approach regarding the problems that are imposed by work is needed. And he suggested that there is requirement to create a separate science which will deal with these issues like in order to obtain from the science the best with the least effort with the highest satisfaction for the own and public welfare and by acting fair with regard to own concerns and others. So in long back 1857 the word ergonomics was coined. Now in 1949 Moodle in England reinvented that coined word ergonomics. So that is in 1949. After that in 20th century, middle, middle of the 20th century, then not only ergonomics, other words also came like human engineering in German speaking areas. Anglo-American language, they mentioned this science or this subject as human factors and in European countries, they called it ergonomics. So the human engineering or ergonomics 
which at first point in 1857 gradually in different countries or different parts of the world took different names like human engineering, human factors, ergonomics. Not only these names, there are so many other precursors of ergonomics like time study, motion study, these are also other precursors which has been used by various authors. Now, most widely used or widely accepted the definition of ergonomics is given by International IEA, International Ergonomic Association. This International Ergonomic Association, as per their definition, what is ergonomics? They define ergonomics is the scientific discipline concerned with the understanding of the interactions among humans and other elements of a system and the profession. So this is the ergonomics as a subject and here ergonomics as the profession and the profession that applies theoretical principles, data, methods to design in order to design in order to optimize human well-being and overall system performance. So I have defined ergonomics as a subject as well as as a profession. Now, who are ergonomists? As per the definition of IEA, practitioners of ergonomics and ergonomists contribute to the design and evolution of tasks, jobs, products, environments and systems in order to make them compatible with the needs, abilities and limitations of the people. So, IEA define both what is ergonomics as well as who are ergonomists. Then down the line, years after years, in various research papers, various researchers, research paper or books, they have mentioned ergonomics, defined ergonomics as per their understanding. If you see this definition by Fernandez in 1995, the design of the workplace, equipment, machine, tool, product, environment and system, taking into consideration the human physical physiological, biomechanical and psychological capabilities and optimizing the effectiveness and productivity of the work system while assuring the safety, health, well-being of the workers. In general, the aim in ergonomics is to fit the task to the man, not individual to the task as we have already mentioned. So in this way, if you go through all these definitions, so various authors in their research paper, they have defined differently. Now, in their research paper, Jaffer et al. 2011, they mention the commonly highlighted view of the definition of ergonomics is mainly about the relationship between human, machine, systems, job design and the work environment. Now, in 1959, so we are discussing about the history. So, after history, we have discussed few definitions of ergonomics. Then if you look at this one, in 1959, various scientific organizations deal to with ergonomics, grouped under the group of International Ergonomic Association. So, in 1959, ergonomics, International Ergonomic Association, was originated. Then in India, we are talking about Indian, Indian Society of Ergonomics because this we, we are from Indi, Indian, so Indian Institute of Technology Guwahati. So in this curricula, in this course, we will emphasize little bit about the ergonomic scenario in India. So for that purpose, here I have mentioned that Indian Society of Ergonomics. The Indian Society of Ergonomics 
was established in 1983 and it is the only professional body in India which dealing with ergonomics and human factors professionals in India. Now, so far during discussion of definition of ergonomics and human factors, we have many times used that word. Sometimes you are telling ergonomics, sometimes you are mentioning as human factors. But now the question is coming, are these two words, human factors and ergonomics, are they synonymous or these two are completely different words? Or what's the relation between ergonomics, human factors and ergonomics? So if we look at the development of both this subject area, then we will find the, the subject area human factors actually developed in United States of America, USA. And its roots subjects are, roots are grounded in psychology, applied experimental psychology, engineering psychology and human engineering. So the subject human factor, human factors or human factor engineering actually developed from sub other discipline like psychology and it was mainly popular in USA. On the other hand, if we look at the ergonomics, ergonomics is popular in European countries and the subjects from which this subject evolved or flourished those subjects are actually anatomy, physiology, in industrial medicine, design, architecture. So from all these subjects, the, sub, the ergonomics took input and gradually established as a new branch, that is ergonomics. As such, there is no difference between human factors and ergonomics. These two words human factors and ergonomics nowadays are being used synonymously when the meanings are same only difference is that from which subject it is originated at the same time where it is much more popular in which countries only there is the difference but in other way these two human factors and ergonomics these two words are synonymous for that reason if you look at this portion in USA human which was earlier known as human factor society has recently changed its name to Human Factors and Ergonomic Society. To emphasize that Human Factors and Ergonomics are not different. This is synonymous only. Now, while we are discussing about Ergonomics, then we are moving towards System Design Approach in Ergonomics. So, already during discussion of definition of ergonomics, we mentioned that human, work element and surrounding physical environment, these three components comprising a system. So in this example, Bishay in 2012 in his book, he mentioned that human as system component, designers must treat the human to be component or integral component of the system that is being designed. The process for designing a vehicle should does involve the consideration of the following major components. One is obviously obviously driver, then vehicle and environment. Because he is defining the system approach of ergonomics in the field of automotive ergonomics. In automotive ergonomics, while there is interaction between driver and vehicle, in the interaction there is surrounding environment. In driver vehicle interaction, with this driver vehicle interaction, he has described various system components. Now if you look at the driver and user, driver and user, we have, while we are discussing about driver and user, we must know about the characteristics, capabilities and limitation of driver. Similarly, for vehicle, we need to study type, size, body shape, subsystem, components, all this. Similarly, while you are talking about environment, then road condition, traffic, weather, dust, 
illumination level or it is daytime or night so all these factors is related to environmental variables now this overall system driver is interacting with the vehicle where there is this environmental factors in this interaction why is this study of this interaction is important because we need to discuss about performance how well how much task completion time errors so we need to discuss about the performance we need to discuss about the preference like dislike similarly perception quality craftsmanship harmony so in driver vehicle interaction also that system driver vehicle interaction in that case the system is comprising of these three factors and this interaction is going on and there is major role of ergonomics because the vehicle its operation its design everything is actually performed by human being only so key learning from this slide is that in any system while you are designing the vehicle we should not feel that okay driver is out of the system the whole vehicle design process will include both driver or human or passenger at the same time it we should also consider the surrounding environment now in this slide we have categorized those three components what we are discussing so far that in this system man machine environment system there are three components one is human component second is machine component and the third one is environment component so under human component what we are discussing we are discussing about dimensional requirement physiological requirement biomechanical requirement psychological requirement so these are discussed under human component similarly under machine component what we discuss we discuss about physical attributes of the machine or facility or the product then energy to run that machine then safety and hygiene force requirement moving parts all these are actually coming under machine component similarly under environmental component what we are discussing the thermal condition visual that illumination glare then auditory vibration radiation dust so all these factors are discussed under environmental component now for any system there is three elements three basic components one is input process and output in man machine system also these three factors will be available one is input second is process third one is output now if you look at this diagram then this side man in human or user or operator human user operator for that there are three parts input process output similarly this side is the machine part machine part for machine also there is output process input now if i give the example it will be much more easier to understand if we give the example say i am human being so you we should know about the characteristics of the human user characteristics user capabilities user limitation now if we take the example of inter my interaction with the laptop then what is happening as a human being i am typing on the Uh, first, uh, first input. First, we are giving the in. We are receiving the input from the computer screen. I am looking at the computer screen. Input is coming through my visual visual sensory system, and that information is going to my brain. First, information I am passing that information through my visual sense, special sense. Then it is going to my next. It is going to my brain. It is being processed. so first input is received by various sensory channels in this case particularly in this case i am receiving information through my eyes then it is going to my brain in the brain it is being processed <coughs> after that 
that some output is there what is that output after processing in the brain then i am pressing the key so that is actually neuromuscular action so first i am receiving the information from the computer i am processing that information in my mind in my brain and then i am doing some muscular activity neuromuscular activity that is the output whatever is the output from my side that is actually going as the input for the computer so my output that is typing of that key is going as the input for the computer or laptop while i am pressing any switch that is actually input for the machine then machine processing that one that laptop is processing that one mechanical either mechanical process is there or electronic process is there then machine is giving some output the screen is now changed so this step after pressing this e that input is going it is processed electronically in that laptop and ultimately it is giving some output it is moving towards the next screen then whatever is that output is provided by the machine in this example laptop so whatever output is provided by the laptop that again going as the input for human being so while i am pressing it is going to the next screen and now i am looking at the next screen so this is the input for me and this interaction man and machine this interaction is going on and this interaction is also influenced by surrounding immediate environment as well as control as well as the overall uh, so many other factors like organizational factor psychosocial factors so many factors also affect this influence interaction so regarding the system design approach it is very important in the earlier slide also we mentioned in this slide that human is the prime system component because whatever you are designing whatever you are developing that is for human for the people that is developed by the people and of the people so as the design process considering these three factors three things so this is very important now while we are discussing about ergonomics there are you we will find one what that is ergonomic stressors what are ergonomic stressors any condition that poses biomechanical stress on human body leading to an increased risk of developing musculoskeletal problem that is known as ergonomic stressors there are varieties of ergonomic stressors like excessive force exertion awkward working posture repetitive motion heavy load handling inefficient insufficient recovery time movement of body joints beyond the comfort range prolonged duration of work psychosocial factors adverse physical condition like vibration heat cold noise illumination then sustained posture I mean we are unable to change the posture we are undergoing a constant posture so all these factors these are only a few of the stressors there is a very lengthy list so all these factors actually affect human body human performance and ultimately productivity now after discussing the definition of ergonomics various uh, system approach in ergonomics this we are moving towards the importance of ergonomics why knowledge of ergonomics is important for designing any product or facility because ergonomics is such a subject it actually deals with occupational health it deals with efficiency productivity of the system and also it deals with various safety issues in any product facility or process design if we follow ergonomic principle then what we will if we don't follow sorry if we don't follow then what will happen then there will be fatigue pain illness low moral frustration irritation all these things will happen and ultimately in the long run it will lead to poor quality absenteeism higher cost higher employee turnover requirement of training this will be the output on the other hand if we can use ergonomic principle 
in our day to day life while we are developing some product facility then we will get so many benefits what are those benefits there will be higher productivity higher quality reduce operator injury increase moral greater job satisfaction low medical and insurance cost reduce time and so on so from this it is very clear ergonomics is a subject who is dealing with this type of important areas like operational health safety productivity efficiency and if we follow, if we follow ergonomics then we will have so many benefits so knowledge of ergonomics is very much important while we are designing or developing some product facility or process so if we recall that slide we just mentioned that we will start from design first we have some basic idea about the design then we will discuss about basics of ergonomics its definition so now the point is that what's the relation between this ergonomics and design if you see this statement Choudhury et al 2012 they rightly pointed out that design and ergonomics are actually complementary to each other like a lock and key model without key lock is useless on the other hand without lock key is valueless so relationship between this design and ergonomics actually they are complementary to each other ergonomics or human factors engineering is a multidisciplinary science which deals with designing equipment or devices and work processes that fit to human body its movement and cognitive abilities in relation to their work performance whereas design is a scientific branch where a particular product or facility or output is made following specific methods from predefined ideas so ergonomics is actually used in the design process again we can recall that slide in that slide we mentioned that in the design development phases we have to consider we have to provide ergonomic inputs from the very beginning very beginning means from conceptual phase then obviously in design phase and detailed design phase also do let on 2012 mentioned that design becomes successful only by incorporation of ergonomic features within it so ergonomist or human factors engineers engineering is actually a design driven discipline so what is ergonomics so he clearly pointed out that ergonomics or human factors engineering is actually a design driven discipline where we have to put knowledge of ergonomics so that we can make our design better as we have already mentioned design becomes successful only when we are incorporating ergonomic knowledge in that design process so what is successful design what is good design the successful design or good design is that where in the design we have considered ergonomic principle or we have provided ergonomic consideration into that product whatever product we are developing or whatever facility we are developing we have to think that the human compatibility for that product now here is one example in this example this is an existing thresher thresher is one equipment that is generally used for threshing various types of grains so the thresher if we want to redesign how we proceed we in various steps we follow we provide various ergonomic input and gradually we develop this type of redesign product 
I to follow make some CAD model of that product, then go for the actual prototype and then refinement of that product. Now, ergonomically design is sometimes is used misnomer nowadays. This is very true because many places on many advertisement you will find it is written ergonomically design. That may be for furniture, that may be for utensils, that may be for so many wide range of products. People are mentioning widely that ergonomically design. But what is ergonomically design? If you look at those advertisement, you will find nothing is there. Those products, in many cases, those products are really not ergonomically designed. And there are so many design loopholes or flaws. For example, this type of advertisement you will find that this tool is ergonomically designed. But truly speaking, this is not. If you study this one, then you will understand that is not ergonomically designed. That is not good for sitting also. Similarly, ergonomically designed handle. Here you can clearly understand that there is no coating, no cover. So whenever you will hold this one, if this pan is hot, obviously you cannot hold the handle. Similarly, this type of spoon that manufacturer or the seller claim that okay, this is an ergonomically design. But if you <coughs> check the usability, <coughs> sorry. So if you check the usability, that is actually not good for use. But it does not mean that okay, all the products in the market are not ergonomically designed for a good design. Obviously, there are so many products in the market which are really good and various ergonomics or human factor aspect has been considered in their design. So one example is this one, finger glue bypass pruner. So this is really ergonomically designed. They have considered human hand dimension, gripping and so many other issues. So, so far what we discussed, we discussed about design, then gradually move to ergonomics. Next we discussed what is the relation between ergonomics and design. Then we are coming to physical ergonomics versus, versus virtual ergonomics. Now what is physical ergonomics and what is virtual ergonomics? In physical ergonomics, if you look at these two images, so in this case, real human being is operating this grass cutter machine and this is a cat generated human model operating that cat model of that grass cutter machine. In both the cases, So what is happening? Human machine interaction is going on, but this interaction is going on in real scenario, mean in physical environment. That human being is real, product is also real and interaction is going on and that interaction is going on in real life. This, so while we are studying this human machine compatibility in physical mode, that is called physical ergonomics. On the other hand, while in cat generated environment, where human model is cat generated, product model is also cat generated, while you are studying the compatibility between product and human, that is coming under virtual ergonomics. So broadly we can categorize ergonomics in these two areas, one is physical ergonomics, another is virtual ergonomics. In digital human modeling software, we go for this virtual man machine interface and virtual ergonomic evaluation. Now, what are the challenges to ergonomics? In why ergonomics is important and how we can use this type of CAD software generated human model and use that human model for various ergonomic evaluation or providing ergonomic input in the design. So here you can see there are huge variation in human body shape and sizes in population. Similarly, 
in the market also there may be different types of products in the market otherwise in your mind there are thousands of concepts of the new product now how will you understand that which product will be optimally fitted with the human requirement human requirement in terms of their body dimension their capability mean all those points capability is limitation and all this next the same thing we can evaluate which product is good for the population or wide range of population so for that purpose we can go for this type of physical ergonomic evaluation where the product model or the product we can acquire and we can go for real human trial we can ask different types of real human who are real human in different types in terms of say age variation sex variation somatotype variation so we can ask fat person thin person children adult age different types of people we can call we can ask them to use that product and get the feedback on the other hand what we can do but if we go for this type of process then this is time consuming then if we find any problem in the design again we have to go for redesign and modification that will be costly because already we have made that product so redesign modification will be time consuming costly and then there will be wastage of material so so many problems are there but the same evaluation if we do in virtual environment like this so if we generate cad model of the that cad model for human and we can vary we can make male model female model or we can prepare the human model as per somatotype variation age variation similarly we can make the cad model of the product after developing cad model of human and cad model of the product what we can do we can go for interfacing these two with the appropriate working posture we can simulate various activities and that time we can check various that whether this is compatible with the human body dimension dimensional requirement or anthropometric that is anthropometric requirement or biomechanical requirement and whether that human can operate this equipment or machine comfortably or not so in this way using virtual environment in virtual environment that cat generated environment using digital human model using cat product model we can evaluate we can go for various types of ergonomic evaluation okay fine so so far we have discussed about design the ergonomics relationship between ergonomics and design then what is virtual ergonomics what is physical ergonomics and what is virtual ergonomics now as i mentioned i am assistant professor from indian institute of technology so for our indian students we want to give some information about how ergonomics originated and developed in india so for that purpose in the next few slides we will discuss about ergonomics in india in this developing country india ergonomics actually started long back in 1945 Industrial Health Center and Advisory Committee by Indian Research and Research Fund Association (ICMR) was established. Then, in 1955, ergonomics research started in Department of Physiology, Presidency College, Calcutta. In 1960, Industrial Physiology Division, Central Labor Institute, Mumbai, and Work Physiology Division, Central Mining Research Institute, Dhanbad, they started research. in the field of occupational health and ergonomics here most important thing 
these are only related to research but in 1971 first postgraduate course in ergonomics and work physiology was introduced in calcutta university by this person he is professor arun sen the first academic course of ergonomics and work physiology was initiated in 1971 at university of calcutta by this pioneer ergonomist professor arun sen then years after years in so many colleges universities they introduced course full fledged course on ergonomics or as a part of their curriculum they started presently in india there are various academic institutions where ergonomics is being taught so this is a list of those colleges or universities for example calcutta university vidyasagar university bardwan university kolan university so there is a and many of the iits also then iisc bangalore in nits so in many institutions of india right now the, these academic institutions are running course related to ergonomics and on the right side panel you will find various research papers where say overview of ergonomics ergonomic needs and research in india so that has been published in this journal so you can go through this thing then we will get more ideas or more knowledge about the development of ergonomics in india growth of ergonomics in india by ak ganguly in 2009 he has published similarly another he has another publication in 2013 ergonomics for indian industry so if we go through these literatures then we will get a fair idea about history and development of ergonomics in indian scenario then there are many other academic institutions where these course ergonomics or human factors related course are being taught so here i have listed almost 30 institution similarly in many other institutions where they are not teaching that course with the name of ergonomics or human factors in their curriculum they have mentioned the similar topics under occupational health and safety so these are the institutions where occupational health and safety related courses are being taught in india so here is also a lengthy list you can go through one after another so here i have listed almost 24 institutions then there are many research institutes which are dealing with research r and they have r and d labs on ergonomics as well as occupational health so out of those research institutions these are the popular one defense institute of physiology and allied sciences drdo delhi national institute of occupational health nioe chamedabad central labor institute mumbai regional occupational health center kolkata the national institute of rehabilitation training and research odisha national institute of orthopedically handicapped it is also in calcutta So now here is some information related to my lab where I am associated. This is Ergonomics Laboratory at Department of Design, IIT Guwahati. So in our lab we have the state of art facility for different types of ergonomic evaluation. So I suggest all the students to explore this website. Then you will get much more idea about various types of facilities. and our publication and also what types of research is going on in indian scenario in the field of ergonomics now domain of specialization so only we have mentioned that ergonomics 
we can categorize physical ergonomics and virtual ergonomics in terms of whether that ergonomic evaluation is going on in physical environment or in virtual environment. But as a subject ergonomics it is being categorized in three different domains. What are those domains? One is physical ergonomics, another is cognitive ergonomics and another is organizational ergonomics. So these three are the domains of specialization under ergonomics. In physical ergonomics, we study these areas, human anatomy, anthropometry, physiology, biomechanics. In cognitive, mental processes, perception, reasoning, motor response. Similarly, in organizational ergonomics, we discuss about organizational structure, policies, processes. Now, here are three examples of different types of different domains. So one is this one, physical ergonomics. So what is in this, what it is shown? It is shown whether human body dimension is compatible with the dimension of the physical dimension of the product. So that type of compatibility study in physical environment where we are discussing about the anthropometric compatibility or posture or comfort that is coming under physical ergonomics. Similarly, under cognitive ergonomics, say for example decision making, in front of you there are so many products and you have to select one particular product, you have to make decision that which product you like. So that visual information processing or auditory information processing or decision making. So all these are areas are actually coming under cognitive ergonomics. Similarly, if you look at this one, this is a this is an example of a classroom. In this classroom example, it is coming under organizational ergonomics. Mean that organization, that's colleges or university, college or university administration, they have decided that how should be the size of the classroom, what should be the student teacher ratio, how should be the space layout, all these things actually decided by the organization. So this is coming under organizational ergonomics. Now if you go through these three domains, so physical ergonomics, it is concerned with human anatomical, anthropometric, physiological and biomechanical characteristics as they relate to the physical activity. Relevant topics include working posture, material handling, repetitive movement, musculoskeletal disorder, workplace and so on. Similarly, in cognitive ergonomics is concerned with mental processes such as perception, memory, reasoning and motor response as they affect interaction among human and other elements of a system. Relevant topics include mental workload, decision making as we have already mentioned in the earlier slide. Like this one physical, the, the next one, this is physical ergonomics, the cognitive ergonomics, the next one is organizational ergonomics. In organizational ergonomics, it is concerned with optimization of the socio-technical te uh, system, including their organization, structure, policies, processes. Relevant topics include communication, new response management, work design, design of working times, teamwork, participatory design, community ergonomics, cooperative work. So this area are coming under organizational ergonomics. So now these three domains will be much more clear. We are giving in a so earlier slide we have discussed with three different examples. One example physical, one for cognitive and another for organizational. But if we combine these three domains in a single example, and how it is coming? We are giving, let us take the example of this classroom. In this classroom, in the same, actually these three domains are not separate. These are integral part of any system. These are the integral part of any discussion. While we are discussing about physical ergonomics, obviously there is cognitive ergonomics and organizational ergonomics. So if we take this example, classroom, so while 
teacher is interacting with the students or and students and teacher is interacting with the overall workplace then defined domain of ergonomics is involved physical ergonomics so where this projection screen is placed so that all the students as well as the faculty members can see it clearly so positioning of that screen is very important that positioning of that screen projector screen is coming under physical ergonomics so that the students as well as teacher can visualize it very clearly without much effort and without much neck movement similarly cognitive ergonomics teacher is telling something students are listening then on the projection there are some visual information students are perceiving those information through their sensory modalities particularly through vision sense and then they are replying to teacher so this is coming under cognitive ergonomics similarly the third part is sorry this is this should be so this is a mistake this should be organizational ergonomics in organizational ergonomics what is there in organizational ergonomics so providing audio visual facilities by the institute so in this classroom whatever audio visual facilities has been provided or whatever is the arrangement of the classroom space layout all these actually provided by the institute so institute as an organization decide that what which type of audio visual facility to be provided or what type of the classroom layout is required or what type of furniture to be purchased for this classroom so all these actually decided by the organization as a whole so in a in every system all the three domains of ergonomics can be discussed so we have discussed this one with the example of this classroom the same classroom example we can discuss about physical ergonomics cognitive ergonomics as well as organizational ergonomics next moving to human factors to be considered for design and technology application various human factors or ergonomic issues which we need to discuss in human machine interaction now here if you look at this chart on y axis it is user or operator characteristics so these are the user or operator's characteristics on x axis it is machine or product characteristics so human characteristics and this is product or facility characteristics now how these two characteristics are interacting with each other static physical requirement from user side user's physical requirement at the same time static physical dimension of the product or facility that is discussed under anthropometry so what is anthropometry so here you can look at this color coding these are the characteristics of the user these are the characteristics of the product and if you look at the color coding so what it indicates it indicates that anthropometry is a is a subject i will discuss about static physical requirement by the user or human and static physical dimension of the product why human is interacting with the product human's physical dimension whether human's physical dimension is compatible with the product's physical dimension that is coming under anthropometry similarly under biomechanics what we are discussing we are discussing dynamic physical requirement of the human body with dynamic physical dimension that is coming under biomechanics for 
one example one example you can give the reachability how human can move their defined body parts mean particularly hand or leg for reaching or holding some object and physical dynamic physical dimension so if someone opening a door or closing a door so for that purpose how much even hand can move at the same time what that for the facility for door movement what allowances has been provided similarly if we look at this top one aesthetic evolution under aesthetic evolution what we do affective needs of human at the same time as or visual aesthetics of the product so that is actually coming under aesthetic evolution similarly cognitive ability of human being and operability of the product and machine it is coming under information processing so under information processing we discuss about what's the operational requirement of the machine or instrument at the same time well whether that is compatible with the human cognitive ability we discuss about that so with this schematic diagram it is very clearly understood that various subject or discipline under the field of ergonomics is actually interaction between various characteristics of the operator and various characteristics of the machine or product now in this subject ergonomics or human factors we discuss various aspects of human or environment physiological aspect under physiological aspect we discuss about cardiovascular response respiratory response metabolic response and ultimately all these response leads to if uh, the product or facility is not ergonomically designed so what it will do it will lead to physiological load or physiological stress and when there is physiological load or physiological stress it ultimately affect human body systems there are various systems nervous system digestive system so all these systems actually will be affected by physiological stress and human will become ill or he or she will feel discomfort similarly under anthropometry and biomechanical aspect various issues like anthropometry compatibility comfort of body joint parts the weight and center gravity so these factors we study and while there is anthropometric or biomechanical incompatibility then what will happen it will leads to musculoskeletal load there will be enhanced musculoskeletal load while there is musculoskeletal enhanced musculoskeletal load it will in the long run it will develop different types of musculoskeletal disorder now various psychological aspects in various psychological aspects we discuss about design color texture material of the product concise information universal appeal and aesthetics so the psychological aspects ultimately relate to cognitive load so whatever information is by is being provided by the instrument or human being is perceiving from that instrument or product that ultimately increasing the cognitive workload of the human if cognitive workload is high what is cognitive workload cognitive workload is that human perception about the work being performed if he feels that work is difficult if he if he feels that work is taking much mental effort or physical effort then his cognitive workload is more if cognitive workload is high then it will affect information processing it will there will be sleep disorder there will be it will also affect physical health then under ergonomics we also discuss about various environmental aspects we mentioned already that level of illumination noise vibration radiation all these factors we study similarly there is also 
other aspects like socio-cultural aspects. Under socio-cultural aspect, we discussed about motion stereotype, handedness, left-handed, right-handed, users, educational status, economic status, language religions. So, so many other issues actually discussed under the field of ergonomics. Now, now moving towards the application. We already discussed why ergonomics is important in the field of design. Now, if we talk about application, why ergonomics is being applied? Answer is ergonomics is applied every higher. Higher there is human, there is application of ergonomics. As we have already defined that ergonomics is interaction between human and is or work element. So while human is interacting with any sort of product or process or article or artifact, every higher there is requirement of ergonomics. In, in any industrial or occupational sector, starting from aerospace engineering, agriculture sector, fashion technology, healthcare, everywhere there is application of ergonomics. Even if we say that we want to design something for our pet, dog or cat, in that case also we have to think, we are designing for the say one cage for that cat or for dog, we are not designing for them only. We are designing for human convenience. So ultimately whatever we are designing, that we always have to keep in mind the human need, human requirement. Now in any, this is only a very small list, in any field there is application of ergonomics. So here are some examples are given, say for example virtual environment we are using we are going for ergonomic evaluation in all the places, references are provided. In aerospace and aviation sector, there is also use of ergonomics, how we can design these night vision goggles, then this type of helmet. Then in various industrial sector, how we can use the knowledge of ergonomics for betterment of their occupational health, for providing their better infrastructural facility so that people can work easily, comfortably. Similarly, in garden, not only this type of industrial sector or aviation sector, even in garment industry, ergonomics is important. Because we have to think that how the garment should be designed. Not only it should be fitted with the human body, at the same time you have to think that material of the gar or fabric, type of the fabric or material, it should be such that after wearing that garment, human should feel comfortable. He or she should not sew it or it should not feeling of too hot or uh, it is too tight. At the same time while someone is wearing some cloth, he or she must have the normal range of motion of body parts. It should not restrict hand or leg movement or body parts movement. So that much allowances should be given in the design. Similarly ergonomics is used in different types of industrial product design. The automobile industry, automobile sector, vehicle design, we use, we consider ergonomic so that design can be improved. So now key learning from module 1. So, so far what we have learned? So first we discussed about definition of design and ergonomics. What is design? What is ergonomics? Then stages of product, workstation design. So what are the key defined as we mentioned that pre-conceptual phase, conceptual phase, pre-design stage, detailed design stage. So various stages in the design process. Then relationship between design and ergonomics. Then whether ergonomics and human factors, these two words are different or they are same, mean synonymous. Then system design approach in ergonomics, we have discussed about that. Then why knowledge of ergonomics is required in field of industrial design or engineering. 
system design approach in ergonomics already you have mentioned then another is ergonomics in india how the subject ergonomics has been introduced in india and how it is developing or it is flourishing that we also discussed we discussed about various academic institutions research institutions where this type of ergonomics or occupational health and safety related courses are being taught then we discussed about domain of specialization of ergonomics we talked about physical ergonomics cognitive ergonomics organizational ergonomics then at the end we discussed application of ergonomics in various occupational or industrial sector and in this uh, slide we mention particularly that ergonomics is such a subject it its requirement is in every hire any facility product or any process which is used by human which is for the human or by the human or of the human it is there is obviously requirement of ergonomics now you can note down this of this information that there are various useful online resources you can go through all these resources you will get so many other information which has not been covered within this uh, slides so all these resources are very important i suggest all of you to explore those links and these are the references which i have used in various slides for preparing the slide and at the end thank you all and this is a beautiful campus of our institute that is indian institute of technology guwahati i welcome you all to this beautiful campus thank you